Hello and welcome to Techie Chap. In today's episode, I am going to be taking a look at Sparky Linux 6.5. It's the latest release as of November 2022 and it's super lightweight based on LXQT and I'm looking forward to giving it a spin. Find out how I got on after the intro. <music> Here we are at the Sparky Linux 6.5 default desktop and first impressions are, well, this isn't going to rock anyone's world in terms of appearance. However, if speed is your thing, then this may well be the Linux edition for you. Let's take a look at the applications included first of all. And uh, if first, if we go to accessories, we get Featherpad for your notes, uh, LXQT file archiver for managing your zip files, um, PC Man file manager, which is a super quick file manager, really stable, and I think a little bit underappreciated in the Linux world, given how stable it is and the number of options, including, as you can see, Split View which is all there and I like split view because uh, when you click on the pane you can just literally change to wherever you want to copy to and drag and drop between window panes there so yeah great PC file manager is is not the most fully featured it's not going to be dolphin uh, or anything like that but it is a very good file manager under graphics, we have LX Image, um, LibreOffice Draw, Screenshot, and Scanlight for scanning stuff. Uh, Firefox is included as your internet browser, and when you open Firefox, you immediately get taken to DuckDuckGo, which is great. However, if you do a search for Sparky in the address bar here, then you're going to get Google. So they haven't customized Firefox to use DuckDuckGo as the default uh, search engine, but it's not the end of the world. It's more an observation and very easy to uh, change yourself if you're not a Google fan. The Sparky Linux website itself uh, is almost covered in adverts which is a little bit disappointing but if you can get past all the adverts and accidentally clicking on adverts like this thing here manualsdirectory.org then there is some useful information we are running sparky 6.5 and this was released on the 14th of november 2022 which is great. It's based on Debian 11 Bullseye. So that is the stable edition of Debian 11. The repos have been updated to the latest stable repos, both Debian and Sparky. That means the uh, software that you get uh, has been updated as of November 13th, uh, 2022, which is fairly close to when this video was recorded. You get Thunderbird as an email client, LibreOffice for your Office applications, and there are quite a few choices with regards to the actual desktop that you run. In fact, let's take a look at that now. So you click on download. I'm running stable, but you can choose the semi-rolling release as well. Uh, if we click on stable, as that's the one I'm running, I've picked LXQT edition given that this was the first one in the list and I figured that maybe this was the one to showcase Sparky Linux. I think it does a fairly good job of that. But we also have a choice here of XFCE, KDE, uh, a minimal GUI as well or a minimal CLI as well. Uh, if we go down here we also have 32-bit editions as well as ARM editions as well, which the ARM edition runs Openbox or CLI. So a good variety there of different editions for Sparky Stable, which is great. Let me close that down. 
So what are the things that set Sparky apart from any other Linux edition based on Debian that has LXQT running as a window manager? Well, one of the main things is they have actually put the effort in to build an application manager, uh, an actual app center, and they've done a good job of categorizing the applications within the app center. So for example, if I click on graphics, it's further broken down into graphic editors, graphics viewers, screenshot tools, and others. Graphic editors, indeed, it does show me some pretty decent selection of graphic editors. So they've put a lot of effort here into into put into categorizing these applications and i think it works really well you can also get information on uh, on the on this release as well on this release of app center um, if we click on aptus here you also get some management tools for actually managing your sparky linux including upgrading the system which was one of the things i did after installing Sparky Linux and there were some upgrades that uh, needed to be installed. Um, full system upgrade, refresh the package list, install packages from repositories, fix broken pa packages, edit the main repositories, edit custom repositories. You can really do a lot within this Aptus App Center. They, they really have thought about it and it is a very usable tool. However, if I do a search for OBS Studio, if I can spell it correctly, that is, OBS Studio, it tells me that it can't find OBS Studio. Now, if Aptus App Center was the only tool here and you are a new Linux user, that might stump you a bit. However, if we click on Menu, and then let's go to preferences we will find synaptic package manager and if i just log into that that will quickly launch synaptic and then if i do exactly the same search and there we have it obs studio now, obviously, I've got OBS Studio installed on here. After all, I am recording this video using OBS Studio. However, it's good that there are a couple of options built in to Sparky Linux to navigate those times when you can't find an application within the Aptus App Center. But I do appreciate that they've gone to the effort of building a bespoke uh, application center like that. One of the other things they have done and what you will find if you do choose to install Sparky Linux 6.5 is they've put together a nice welcome screen. And this is actually what you see after you've installed uh, Sparky Linux. And here it will take you to forums, uh, Wikipedia, the Git repo, you can click donate here and I do encourage people to donate to Linux developers where they can. Um, developers need support too. Um, and uh, App Center, which launches the App Center that we just looked at. And straight from here, you can run upgrade, which again will run the App Center upgrade tool as well. It will go off and do that for me. There we go. It's doing a quick check for system upgrades. Now I've recently run this so there shouldn't be any more and indeed there isn't. Your system is up to date. System info, uh, if I click on that you can see some information about the system I'm running it on. I'm running it on my test Dell laptop. A um, bit more information about this particular release of Sparky Linux, the Potolo um, release which is uh, running on kernel 5.10.0-19 AMD64. I have a, a, a i5-4310U CPU and it's got 8 gig of RAM in there as well. So yeah, a good, good little uh, system information. 
uh, menu and you can choose uh, backup as well and that will then take you to the Wikipedia page for the Sparky backup system. It is a shame there are so many adverts all over this. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm not sure why there are so many ads all over this, but um, yeah, that that's, that gets in the way a bit. All right, so let's close the welcome window there. Uh, also down here, you can see you can uh, switch desktops quite easily and you can add more desktops if you want to. Uh, given that this is based on Qt, you can expect to see some KDE applications as well in here and indeed they are so if we go to internet we can see that KDE Connect is included conversation with a capital K uh, for IRC chat uh, compete for your instant messaging um, and there's some quite nice tools Thunderbird is there uh, for your email a full version of LibreOffice is included let's just have a look to see what version of LibreOffice we are currently running and it's 7.0.4.2. Now, you may have noticed that things are running very snappily on this system, given that I am recording the desktop and recording video and recording audio via my microphone here. And indeed it is. If I go to System Tools and Q Terminal, I don't think uh, HTOP is installed, so we'll just run top. Okay, CPU usage, 11, no, 13%. And let's take a look at memory usage. Look at that, 938 meg is in use currently. 938, 937 meg of memory is being used despite the fact that I'm running OBS, recording the desktop, recording the webcam recording audio in full HD that's all it's using that's pretty amazing it has to be said so if you are running a lower end system perhaps limited on RAM as well then this Sparky Linux 6.5 could be a really good Linux distribution to get the most out of your system if you were running a low-end piece of hardware so that does have a lot going for it in that sense also uh, if we click on desktop uh, preferences here on we can we can see that there's some general stuff that you can select like you can add a home uh, folder on your desktop if you want or a trash or computer if you want it to look a little bit more windowy you can also change the background um, the background at the moment I'd say is pretty pretty boring at the moment um, it's very cold uh, here at the moment in the UK so let's just open uh, Open that note that's making me feel even colder let's let's choose that one that should make me feel a bit warmer there we go <laughs> and there is some branding on some of these wallpapers as well right so if we go to uh, preferences and LXQT settings and LXQT configuration center this is a nice place where a little bit like control panel in Windows uh, is where you can sort of manage your uh, setup, your general setup. And if we click on Appearance and LXQT Theme, you can select between Sparky 5 Dark or Sparky 5. And indeed, there are a few other themes as well that you can use to you can use as well uh, on the LXQT. One thing I would say about this Sparky 5 theme is that because there's no shadowing uh, behind the windows it can sometimes be a little bit confusing where to click uh, because these windows tend to blur together like that however you can change all of that and how that behaves because it's LXQT you can install a new theme you can select one of these themes which will change that for example the KDE plasma theme will change that you can even have Covantum themes as well if you want to uh, get a little bit more customization into your LXQT desktop 
as you can see you've got the synaptic package manager tool here um, and obviously within synaptic package manager you can manage your repos as well so if you go to settings and repos you can select uh, various repos here and you can add new repos if you need to repos are really where you get your software from central places where you get your software from it's a bit different to the way uh, windows manages uh, software in that you grab your software via all via the app center or synaptic or your package management tool that's the way linux works really okay so what's my overall impression of sparky linux 6.5 well looks wise it's not going to rock anyone's world it, it, it's not trying to though and that's one of the things I kind of appreciate about this release. What it's trying to do is offer a super stable, super fast desktop experience. Yes, it might look a little dated. The overall experience feels a little bit 1990s, the overall Sparky Linux uh, light theme. It does feel a little bit 1990s to me, but that would be okay if all I was looking for was this super stable, super fast experience. And it certainly delivers on that. Plus, this is more than just a reskinned Debian release. They have actually put some time and effort into designing things like the Aptus App Center, for example. That's impressive. And also the Aptus App Center has some useful utilities contained within to manage your system on go, going forward. So I really like the amount of thought that has gone into here. So a big thanks really to the contributors to this release and it mentions some of them here. Really, really good effort guys, really good. So I would give this release, Sparky Linux 6.5, a 3.5 to 4. Now, if you're running a low-end system, then you probably almost certainly will pick 4 out of 5 because it is going to breathe new life into your system. However, if you're running a system that can run a number of things, full KDE and so on, then... Uh, then it's going to be a three and a half because it's going to deliver an experience that's not going to feel as modern as you can run on your potential hardware. But for what this is trying to do, Sparky Linux 6.5, I think it does a fantastic job. And if you want to revive old hardware or low end hardware, then this is a really good pick for a Linux distribution for you. So that's been my review of Sparky Linux 6.5 stable release running on Debian Bullseye Stable. If you've enjoyed uh, this review, then please click on like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, I do love to see your comments. I should also mention that if you go to my channel and click on about, there's a link on there to buy me a coffee and if you do fancy donating to the channel then I'm more than welcome uh, a, a coffee from yourselves no pressure please feel free not to if you don't want to but I hope you're enjoying the content anyway so I look forward to seeing you next time on Techie Chat thanks for watching